Calvin Photo The skies are haunted by that which it was madness to know, and in those dark, barren voids, whatever lived, lived alone. Scientists have spent decades examining the mystery of extraterrestrial life, and sometimes they have succeeded in acquiring terrifying evidence, even if it ended up hidden for 32 years. On the evening of August 4th, 1990, two anonymous hikers in Calvine, Scotland, decided to take a walk in the Scottish Highlands. Their serene trek was interrupted, however, by something equal parts bizarre and frightening. Hovering silently in the sky was a large diamond-shaped object. Paralyzed with fear, the duo ran into the nearby woodland, from which they observed the mysterious flying machine. After a while, a fighter jet suddenly appeared in the sky and seemed to circle around the peculiar object before flying away. It was at this moment that one of the men captured the six photographs that would later go on to be dubbed the world's clearest UFO pictures. The photograph clearly shows a disquieting scene, a precise diamond-shaped object in the sky with a fighter jet in the background. Wanting to show the world, the hikers took the photos to the Scotland Daily Record newspaper for publication. Unsure of their authenticity, the paper's photo editor sent the negative to the British Ministry of Defense, where they subsequently disappeared for 32 years until being uncovered by journalist David Clark. After his discovery, Clark had the photographs analyzed by a local university that confirmed the photos had not been tampered with or manipulated. What the two men captured in the deserted Scottish Highlands, in fact, did exist, and perhaps still does. Clark, despite his fascination with the Calvin photograph, did not believe it to be related to aliens. He theorized that the strange object was an aircraft built by humans, perhaps the Aurora, a highly classified reconnaissance aircraft that the USA was rumored to be building in the 1980s. Whether the mysterious diamond-shaped object was actually a UFO or just an ordinary aircraft will always remain a mystery. Tasmanian Tiger Thousands of species have gone extinct in the past few decades. These animals now exist only within the pages of history books, lost forever. But what if evidence is discovered that suggests otherwise? The thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger, a native of Tasmania, Australia, is a large marsupial carnivore that supposedly went extinct in 1936. However, there has been a recent influx of supposed sightings and photographs of the animal that refute this claim of extinction. In early 2022, Jessie Mild was hiking in South Australia at the Belair National Park in the Adelaide Hills when she spotted a peculiar animal with a strange gait, which she described as, quote, lolloping. Mild initially chalked it up to being a kangaroo, but her sister, Emma Borges, was convinced it was the Tasmanian tiger and captured a video of it. The creepy footage shows an eerie creature with a sloped back and an elongated head characteristic of the long-dead Tasmanian tiger. It trots for a while and then vanishes back to where it came from. A similar video was captured in 2021 around northern Tasmanian bushland by Neil Waters, a man who was convinced the Tasmanian tiger still exists and who has dedicated his life to uncovering evidence. The video shows a family of animals that are remarkably similar to Tasmanian tigers with striped tails and short feet. Despite the compelling evidence, Tasmanian wildlife biologist Nick Mooney has cast doubt on both sightings. He claims the footage from Jesse Mild is simply a fox inflicted with mange. Waters' footage is actually of a small hopping mammal known as the Tasmanian patty melon. Mooney further clarified that there had been no official sightings of the thylacine since 1936, when the last of them, a specimen called Benjamin, died from exposure at the Beaumaris Zoo. Ghost on a Cliff Occurrences of ghosts are rare, and a ghost captured on camera even more so. In this chilling photograph, it is not the scenic view that made it go viral, but the frightening spectral figure standing silently in the background. 
originally posted on Reddit by user SlicedUpBeef. The photograph is a picture of her friend's cousin, taken by a hiker in Dundas Peak, Ontario. Seemingly an ordinary photograph of a man sitting at the edge of a cliff, zooming in on the background of the image reveals an eerie apparition. Below the edge of the trail, at a steep and isolated corner, there seems to be an abnormally thin and tall person standing erect. Their face appears to be hollow and with no definitive features. There is a possibility of it being another hiker, but Sliced Up Beef dismissed this idea by pointing out the inaccessibility of that specific spot. Other users veered into the supernatural, surmising that it was not a living person at all, but a ghost haunting an abandoned area of the trails. An archived comment by the Architect42 on the original Reddit post, however, refutes the inaccessibility of that specific spot, claiming it was her in the photograph. She explained further that she was supposedly wearing the same attire as that of the apparition. Despite the ambiguity of the comment, the photograph of this faceless creature peering out from behind the trees silently stands to be one of the creepiest photographs captured while hiking. Ilkley-Moore Alien There's little evidence to date of advanced extraterrestrial life, but that doesn't dismiss the existence of potentially supernatural beings, especially given the vastness of the universe. One such piece of evidence comes from a retired policeman named Philip Spencer. On the 1st of December, 1987, Spencer was on his morning walk through Ilkley Moor when he witnessed a frightening scene. The mist-covered moor obscured his view, but mid-walk, he came across a small, blurry figure waving its arms at him. At first, it seemed to be another person on a walk. However, it was when Spencer went closer that he realized it was definitely a being, but not one of this world. And it was not waving at him, but gesturing not to approach. Frightened, Spencer snapped a photograph of the creature before it ran away, and despite the policeman's attempt to follow it, the creature vanished. Shortly after, Spencer saw a craft with a dome top rise into the sky and disappear as fast as it appeared. The creepy encounter did not end there, and the situation became even more terrifying when Spencer eventually reached his father-in-law's house. The village and house's clocks were all an hour ahead of Spencer's watch, and his compass, too, was pointed in the opposite direction. When developed later, the photograph of the creature showed a chilling visual of a blurry, four-foot creature with an abnormally disproportionate body. The photo was later handed to UFO researchers and analyzed multiple times. Experts concluded that it wasn't manipulated or superimposed, and it did not bear any semblance to local wildlife. As the photograph was being analyzed, Spencer claimed to experience strange dreams. Per the suggestion of a UFO researcher, he attended a regressive hypnotherapy session led by Dr. Jim Singleton in 1988. In what Singleton explains as a, quote, genuine recall, Spencer's original account of the event changed into something even more petrifying. Under hypnosis, he revealed that when he witnessed the creature on the moor, he was paralyzed and lifted up a couple of feet to the hovering craft. Inside, he was instructed to be calm, as a cluster of green creatures performed various medical experiments on him and inserted certain tools inside his nose and mouth. Spencer was also given a tour of the craft and shown a bizarre film with apocalyptic imagery, including nuclear explosions, famines, and floods. He was then shown a second film, the contents of which he refused to reveal, claiming that the aliens who abducted him forbade him, as they did not want humanity to know. He was then returned to the moor as the alien waved goodbye to him and vanished in its craft. Skeptics have doubted the veracity of the incident, debating the quality of the image and noting that it could easily be a man or a cardboard cutout. Also, if Spencer was telling the truth, why did he not photograph the craft, which would have been more difficult to fake? Dietlov Pass, Brignol Frame Number 17 In January of 1959, a tragic event occurred in which nine Soviet trekkers lost their lives in the Dyatlov Pass of the northern Ural Mountains under mysterious circumstances. 
the professional trekking group consisted of alumni from the Ural Polytechnical Institute, who set off on January 23rd and established camp on the eastern slopes of Kolat Siak, which are known for their rough terrain and harsh conditions. Days passed, and in February, when nothing was heard from the hikers, a search party was assembled, eventually arriving at the missing hikers' abandoned campsite. They found the tents sliced as if by a knife and laying in shambles. Amongst the scattered belongings of the hikers were four cameras and a few journals documenting the days leading up to their tragic fate. Around nine sets of footprints were also discovered around the campsite. Shockingly, they were made with bare feet in the sub-zero temperature. The hikers were soon discovered, but with no sign of life in them. Bizarrely, two of them were found barefoot in their undergarments. While most of them had died of hypothermia, at least four had sustained terrible and inexplicable injuries, including a fractured skull, multiple broken ribs, and lacerations on the head. One hiker was found without eyebrows, and another was missing a tongue and both eyes. The doctor examining the mysterious injuries ruled them to be, quote, equivalent to the effect of a car crash. Months later, the last three of the trekkers were exhumed from a 187-foot deep ravine in the woods. An investigation was launched by the Soviet authorities, who determined that six of the hikers had died from hypothermia, while the other three were the victims of physical trauma from unexplained sources. However, they could not explain why the trekkers had abandoned their campsite and their clothes, despite the freezing temperatures. Things continued to become more horrifying and mysterious, as the photos taken on the trekkers' cameras were developed, and two photos emerged that drove speculation of supernatural events. Frame number 17, taken from the camera of Nikolai Thibault Brinol, is perhaps the most well-known, with some saying that it shows evidence of a large creature, perhaps a yeti, stalking the group. This final frame captured the chilling image of a burly figure with no visible features standing directly in the frame. The second unexplained photo is the last image on the camera of Yuri Krivonyshenko, frame number 34. This obscure photograph seems to show a dazzling spherical object surrounded by darkness. Speculated to be a blurry UFO, this image fueled the possibility of extraterrestrials being involved in the incident. Despite these images never being fully explained, officials in 2020 concluded that an avalanche of heavy snow slabs surprised the slumbering victims, overtaking some and pushing others to seek safety at a nearby ridge. Unable to see more than 50 feet ahead, the hikers froze to death as they tried to return to their tent. Thank you for watching Dark 5. Don't forget to like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond. Your support and engagement help my videos get seen by even more people. And let me know if there are any other mysterious photographs I should investigate.